video is seafood risotto. The uh, advantage of talking about seafood risotto is that all risotto works essentially exactly the same way. It's rice, things to make the rice taste good, and liquid to cook the rice in. This week, I've got a bunch of our uh, skinny loot diced up as a little bit of a protein base for our seafood risotto. Some shallots, some garlic, of course our arborio rice, you can get that here or just about any grocery store carries it. And then when we get towards the end, I will finish it with some shrimp, some clams, and a chunk of salmon that one of our uh, kind customers brought in for us that he bought this week. So let's head back to the stove. So uh, in a big pot like this one, I've got some fish stock melting down. I'm gonna flavor it with a little bit of pickling spice just because I like the way that tastes. So one of the big important things about making the risotto is that the rice be in a hot pan cooking and all the stock be hot. Because otherwise, every time you take a ladle of cold stock and put it over your warm rice, you stop the cooking process. It takes hours to get it cooked at that point. You can make risotto in 25 or 30 minutes, or you can make it in a day and a half. I recommend 25 minutes. So I've got an oil in this pot that I'm gonna cook the rice in. It's nice and hot, so I'm gonna drop my sausage in. The sausage is just getting browned up a little bit. It's gonna add some uh, beefy, fatty flavor to the uh, finished dish. Uh, you can just make sausage risotto with you know any fresh sausage or dried sausage you like. This is sort of the uh, traditional dry sausage kind of paella style risotto situation. All those things work on the same st same system. So risotto paella, aside from small technical things, no real difference whatsoever. Sausage starting to smell nice, so I'm going in with the shallots and garlic. You could do the shallots and then the garlic. You could toast the garlic real hard first to get that, you know, roasted garlic kind of aromatic profile if you wanted to. Because I'm going to try and really feature the seafood in this, I'm not trying to wind anything up, any slider up too terribly high. A little bit of salt will help the vegetables break down. and uh, let this work for a second. We'll come back when it's ready to start adding rice and things. Mm. All right, so as you can see, the uh, onions and garlic and everything have sweated down till they're translucent, but are not taking on very much color. I did get a little color on them, but that's not the end of the world. Our risotto doesn't have to be perfectly blonde. Um, so I've got basically three cups of arborio rice here. Three cups of rice is gonna take probably between eight and 10 cups of liquid by the time you're done. It takes up a ton. Because it's cooking so slowly, you do a fair amount of, of reduction. So the liquid is just evaporating as well as being absorbed by the rice. Um, and so you just drop your rice into your warm pot with all the liquid, or with all the onions and, and sausage and such, so that you can get all the grains coated in a little bit of fat helps them when you start adding liquid to stay separate and individual. The goal here is to get the rice cooked all the way through without um, starting to really break it up very much. You're just going to pound a lot of the starch out of it, but you don't want sort of rice puree, right? So now that it's about time to start adding liquid, I'm going to take some hot, a ladle full of hot stock and just add some in there until it's just about covered. And then I'll keep stirring, stirring, stirring pretty vigorously to uh, extract as much starch from the grains of rice as possible. So there we go, about like that. And then you'll just stir this and stir it and stir it and stir it until the whole thing starts to go a little dry. And then you'll add a little more. Add a little more, add a little more until the rice is cooked. Again, this will take, this process takes 25, 30 minutes. So settle in and uh, get your your uh, stern arm loose. So real quick guys, when I say it will absorb all the liquid, this is exactly what I mean. There's no liquid falling out. It's kind of, the pan is a little bit dry now. So when you get to that point, it's all stirred up and even and looking lovely. Take your ladle, 
nice hot stock. You can see my stock is bubbling, steaming. A little more stock to it. Just keep right on stirring. Um, every once in a while, like every second or third time you add liquid, just reach in there with a spoon. Grab a piece of a, a grain of rice or two, chew on it. When they're creamy and wonderful, cut out, that is an accident on our part. Um, I was saying that uh, every now and again, reach in, grab a couple grains of rice, and eat them. If it's, this is still crunchy and chewy, then I'm gonna keep cooking. If it's creamy and wonderful and cooked all the way through, you're finished and it's time to start seasoning. When we get to the seasoning and adding dairy and all of that stuff, we'll come back to you, all right? My pot, because it was just a little small to be stirring things in for the seasoning process here. Uh, so the rice is cooked, it's tender all the way through and delicious. I salted a little bit as I was cooking. Now we've got a bit of Parmesan cheese. Some people are, are up and down about um, fish and cheese particularly uh, guys I used to work with from uh, bin 36, etc. Um, I like it, so I like my dairy fermented where possible, so I use sour cream or cream cheese, uh, Parmesan and butter here, uh, but you can use whatever you got around. If you like a little fontanella, you like your risotto just a little bit stretchy with the uh, dairy, use that. If you, like, um, if you like it real plain, you can leave the dairy out. I just like it kind of fat, um, you know, Straight heavy whipping cream will give you a very um, rich, but not terribly complex flavor. So you can go that way too. Um, you can see as I'm working here, the cheese is starting to stretch a little bit and you can see that the butter's melting. And, God damn, does it smell good. Um, <laughs> and then to go along with this delicious rice, I have a couple pieces of wild salmon one of our guests was kind enough to uh, bring us in a couple pieces of salmon that he caught. So I just grilled these and then finished them with a little butter while they're resting here. Most of that butter will melt right off and we will go right on top of the risotto. Um, so that's kind of it. I will um, come back in a second once we've got something finished, seasoned, and plated. So you can kind of see how the whole thing came out. So we're back. Here we are, plated risotto with a little bit of our uh, grilled salmon on top. Now, if you want a little bit of acid in your risotto, you can start in the beginning with a little bit of white wine. But with fatty fish like salmon, I like to use lemon juice and I like to go right at the end. And it just kind of lifts and brightens everything up a little bit. It cuts through the butter and the cheese and the fat and everything else that's in the risotto. So there you have it. You can dress it up with some fresh herbs so you can dress it down with a little bit of less dairy, you can just eat rice, anything you like, but that's seafood risotto as we like it here.